You get independence. Doctors and clinicians and these organizations, they don't like that. Big med, big pharma, they don't want to give people control. They don't want people to have control over themselves and their health. They want to tell them what to do. So if you're not already using heart rate variability, what are you doing? You know, I can understand if you're really not in the space, that's totally understandable. You know, that's not a number one priority for you. But if you're already in tune with the market, so to speak, you know, you know about these food sensitivity tests and these other, you know, what I like to call kind of at home health improvement, right? You want to keep the doctor visits to a minimum, you know, those kind, those kinds of things, you know, tools at home that you can use every day to improve your health, you know, but if you are already introduced to that market, you are familiar with heart rate variability. So in this video, as opposed to, you know, explaining what HRV is, there's other videos we have for that. I'm going to talk about why it's super important and really helpful. I mean, I love it. I use it every single day. And then we'll talk about the best HRV monitor. You know, there's a quote that I use a lot to describe heart rate variability. And it's, it's like having a doctor in your pocket. Not like a like a real human doctor. I don't think they'd fit in there, you know, but it's having the access and, and just it's having really independence, you know, because we conduct our daily lives in such a way that, oh, you know, we're scared of this doctor visits. You know, nobody likes going to the doctor. So, you know, this provides you with a tool that you can monitor daily, right? There's other products out there that either, you know, you do one test and it tells you everything like these food sensitivity tests or, you know, whatever DNA tests and, you know, different kind of health screenings that you would do once a week or once a month. HRV is something that you can have with you every single day, every step of the way, right? And it touches upon tons of different lifestyle factors. You know, the best way to think of it is any internal stress that occurs, heart rate variability will capture it. So if you look at the main areas of research, it's in fitness, right? Recovery, optimization, uh, not to overwork. Uh, it's actual stress, right? Stress responses, uh, stress response from foods, right? That's a huge one. Uh, inflammation as well, internal inflammation, among other things. But those are really the main pieces. And I would think those four items are really constitute 90% of your internal health. So right there, you already have a key to monitor 90% of the stressors that are even possible internally, right? Because HRV capture is capturing your autonomic nervous system, right? So this is fight or flight, as you might know, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. And those four things elicit a response that is clear when you're measuring heart rate variability. Let's take the example of food. The way that I use it, and I think that, you know, many others are using it. Let's say, you know, you're trying a new diet or you're just you want to test out your current diet that you have. You know, first thing that you want to do always is establish your heart rate variability baseline, right? This is like you're walking around HRV, right? What what's your average? And then, you know, the number that you're trying to improve, right? This is this is that mean number. Uh, not mean as in like it's offensive, you, you know what I mean. This is the number that you're trying to increase, okay? Because a high HRV is good, a low HRV is bad. So with food, let's say you take an easy example. Like let's say we had a Big Mac meal, right? Your HRV, first of all, HRV is going to go down regardless of what you eat. Now, the point is you want to make sure that HRV gets back to your baseline as fast as possible right? Because that's really showing you how fast you're recovering, right? So that recovery time from the moment you eat to back to baseline, that's your recovery time from food. And you would assume for most people that a Big Mac meal, it would take a really long time, right? The digestion process, these complex carbs, really tough on the digestion. So it's going to take a while to get back up to, to the baseline. Now, that is an obvious example. There are foods out there that you would think are harmless, but they're not harmless to you, right? That's why when people 
you know, that's why when these celebrities come out with these diets and they say, you know, this is the best diet, you have to try this. Well, it may not be the case. It may not be the case for you. What the hell do they know? But you know, your body knows, and heart rate variability gives you the tool to be in the know. So you can even try these certain foods, you know, with like dairy and lactose, and it might even capture the things that you don't feel. You know, certain things you can have digestion problems and bloating and kind of uncomfortable feelings, but there's other things that you can really monitor. You know, you eat, I don't know, whole wheat bread. You're, you're switching different, you know, to a different bread. There's lots of, all of these foods in North America are super highly processed, probably around the world as well. But you, you really get a good indication from HRV. So now the second thing that is actually the highest researched topic in the heart rate variability field, uh, it's training. HRV was kind of initially used among pro athletes to help optimize their training. You can understand how important it is for them. But it's also important for us, the everyday folk, because no matter, it doesn't really even have to be about working out at the gym. It's just any kind of strenuous exercise, you know, shoveling snow or mowing the lawn or, you know, housework. And I actually use this a lot. You know, I don't go to the gym as much anymore. I'm just starting to get back after all this, you know, all this stuff. And it's it's really it's really interesting to see, right? Like I talked about that baseline. Usually I would use it before the gym, right? If I have a time set, I would I would kind of carefully watch my HRV throughout the day. And then if I would take it before the gym. And I've actually I actually ran into this problem several times. You know, I ignored the warning signs from my body. Uh, a few times I had an HRV that was about two points below, you know, and from a five star scale, we'll talk about that later. It was two points below what my baseline is. And I said, you know what, whatever, I'll just take it light. Wrong, bad idea. I ended up going, technically I wasn't fully recover. I ended up going and I was like knocked out for even the next day. I wasn't, even, I wasn't able to recover, bad sleep, all that stuff. So it's super important not just for the athletes, but for every day, you're, it's the same thing. You are trying to get your number back to baseline. You perform certain workouts and you see how long it takes for you to recover, you know, and as your health begins improving, maybe from other areas, right? Maybe you figured out the diet thing and now you're starting to see improvements in the fitness department, right? So maybe you're recovering faster from the fitness, right? So it's putting all of these things together to to reduce the stressors right that are in your body which is so key so that's one of the main things uh, i think you can use it for tracking your recovery time and knowing when to not go to the gym right so let's say if i was a point below what my baseline is maybe then i could do like like cardio or something like that or maybe you know i'll go shovel some snow and that'll be okay but if you just do the same workout so it's really it's nice it's a nice indicator of hey what workout should i do what should i exercise should i exercise maybe not right really awesome tool so yeah at the at the end of the day heart rate variability gives you a window into your overall health like it gives you a peek behind the curtain and you know there's a reason there are tens of thousands of studies on hrv already you know, I'm not I'm not speaking to promote something. I it's it's really been studied for decades now. And, you know, that word I mentioned in the beginning is you get independence a little bit. Right. You know, doctors and clinicians and these organizations, they don't like that. You know, there's a big reason why they're not promoting these things. And I, I've noticed that because we're in the field and I've noticed that, especially with older doctors that have been in there for quite some time. You know, they, some of them are very conservative technologically and, you know, they think that you should come see a doctor, whereas the more, you know, the younger generation of doctors, they're all for it, right? They're all for home monitoring because it gives the doctor a tool as well, right? We're not just saying, hey, don't go to the doctor. We're giving you an additional tool that maybe you can, you know, send to your doctor and they can monitor. And if you know they're hip to HRV and, you know, obviously electrocardiograms, then they will know. But, you know, it's very dangerous when you're poking the bear and, you know, the bear being these, the you know, 
big med, right? Big pharma, they don't want to give people control, right? They, they don't want people to have control over themselves and their health. They want to tell them what to do, right? And I think it's really sad, but I think a lot of people are starting to catch on. HRV is really becoming super popular. So now let's talk about the IO Smart Sleeve. Reason number one why it is the best HRV monitor, because it's the only heart rate variability product that is using an electrocardiogram. What do I mean by that? So HRV is measuring the distance between each successive heartbeat. There are two ways to do that. One is using an optical sensor, which is also known as a BPM sensor. Standard, you know, if you have one, if you have a Fitbit or an Apple, you know, you see the other side once you turn it on, that light's flashing, that's an optical sensor. Auto, also called photoplastomography. I know. But on the other side, an electrocardiogram is ECG and EKG that you would take at the hospital. Super accurate, usually they put the 12 leads on you. With the IO Smart Sleeve, the ECG sample rate, just so you understand why there's such a big difference between the two inputs, an optical sensor processes maximum 50 samples per second. So this is 50 times that the product is communicating with the app and show per second, right? So that's how many data points there are. ECG minimum is 300 samples per second. The IO Smart Sleeve ECG functions at 350 samples per second, right? So that's like, that's 700% more samples in the ECG. Yes, it takes up a little bit more battery, but you're getting a more accurate picture, right? So big difference. Second point is that most smartwatches and bracelets are flawed based on their design. Why do we say that? Because when you are tying a bracelet, you can't tie it tight enough. You know, this, these sensors, especially the optical ones, are super sensitive and they need to be as close to your skin as possible. That's not happening with a wristwatch or a bracelet because you need some room, right? You need to be able to move your wrist around and, you know, not cut off circulation to your hand and your hand falls off. Uh, I'm not saying that's what these products do, but Fitbit has been sued over the inaccuracy because of this very reason. With the smart sleeve, it's compression, right? It's a compression sleeve. It brings the sensors to the skin. And not only is that air gap, I call, we call it the air gap, right? That you have in the bracelets. Not only is that air gap eliminated, but it also keeps the sensor in place. With the wristwatch, you got the air gap. And then once you're moving around, if you're doing any kind of activity, you know, with bars and stuff, it's moving. So you have an air gap and it's constant movement. So it's it's pretty awful. So finally, the coolest part of the IO sleeve is actually the IO Health app. And this is what pairs to the IO Smart Sleeve. And the HR variability is done unlike any product on the market. When you go into the HRV recording, you actually are able to select events. There's this list of events, you know, before bed, before sleep, before work, after work, after workout. So you can, you know, you, you can see what your HRV is trending, how it's trending throughout the day. And at what points of the day is it worse? Or when, when is it less? And it gives you a history at the end and you're able to optimize based on that. And another cool function on the app is that on the home screen, there's actually a stress level widget. So from those events, there are, and we'll get into this in another video probably, but out of those events, there are two types of stressors. We have physical stressors and mental stressors. The physical stressors kind of self-explanatory, working out, right? That is a physical, it's something you do physically. And anytime you work out, your HRV is gonna go down. And then also food, right? So that calculation of the stress level includes all the points in the day when you're not actually physically harming yourself, not in a bad way, but you know, when you're putting your body under stress when it needs to be for food and, and for working out. So that's another really cool function. And you know, just the detail that we have put into the app, you really are not going to find anywhere else. And you know, we've talked about this a lot in other videos. So please go and check those out. Yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.